listen, people, one of the best things that we've invented after sliced bread is knowledge graphs databases. And I'm going to show you today something that you have not seen. So I'm basically going to take cursor and I'm going to add memory to cursor. So it stores anything that cursor does. It saves that in a knowledge graph database. And that memory is persistent across multiple sessions. And I can actually collaborate with Cursor over an extended period of time. This is something that Cursor does not support today, but it definitely should because it's super, super cool. Now, to do that, I'm going to be using Graffiti, which is a very, very popular open source knowledge graph for AI agents. Again, check out the repo. I'm going to leave a link somewhere below. And if you're not familiar with what a knowledge graph database looks like, uh, just as a, as a really, really high level explanation, you can basically take information and break it down in a graph where the nodes, the entities, are the, the, the elements of, of, of that information and the relationship is expressed with the, with the connections between those entities, right? So you get like facts and you get like different entities. Uh, what you can see here in this uh, quick GIF is how you can get a sentence like Kendra loves Adidas shoes. And you can turn that into a graph with two nodes, Kendra and Adidas shoes, and you get like the fact, like the, the relationship between those two entities uh, connecting them. So that is what Graffiti is going to do for us. There are a bunch of other features. Uh, we're going to get uh, there in just a second. But in order to get this working here, it's going to be actually very, very simple because Graffiti has an MCP server. So they support the protocol. That means that we can connect our cursor instance to the Graffiti MCP server, and we can have a graph database backing up that memory. So the instructions are here, but you're basically going to need uh, something important, which is an installation of a graph database. I, I'm on a Mac here, so I installed the Neo4j desktop application, and I created uh, inside, I created Flask. So that's that's going to be my, my database. I just named it Flask. You can name it however you want. But this is where all of the information from Cursor is going to be stored. So I have this running. It took me about five minutes to, to install this. The second step is just to follow the instructions on the Graffiti MCP server. So you can actually clone the repo and run the MCP server. Configuration is super quick. I only had to set these four environment variables. So basically the URI of the database that I created, user and password to connect to that database. And I had to set the OpenAI API key because Graffiti is going to be using one of the GPT X models from OpenAI uh, in order to do its job. You can also use, you know, the model on Azure, if you want to, that's fine. I just use the OpenAI uh, one. I don't even specify, I didn't specify the model name. I'm using GPT-41 uh, Mini, which is the default one in Graffiti. So all of that being said, the next step is for you to run the Graffiti MCP server. And there is one command, this is it. So after you configure it, you run this command, and the MCP server is going to start running on port 8000. So after doing this, you can just go down here and you're going to find integrating with Cursor IDE. And this integration is very, very simple. You're going to need to copy this specification here, this section, this JSON, uh, and you're going to have to go to Cursor and I'm going to go right there and you're going to open the settings Cursor settings, you're going to find MCP. You're going to add a global MCP server that is going to open this MCP.json and you're going to paste there that section, the one that I just copied there. So basically, this is telling Cursor that it should look up the MCP server called Graffiti running in this URL. I mean, this Graffiti is just, you can put whatever name you want here. The important thing is the URL where that server is running. This server, is the one that I have running right here in my terminal window, okay? 
So notice after you do that, uh, you should see a, a green light here, meaning that the server is running. Uh, word of warning, usually you have to close cursor after you do this. Unfortunately, that happens many, many times where I configure a server, but I still need to close cursor in order for that server to actually take hold. One more thing before we're ready to see this working, and it's going to be cool. Uh, go to rules, and here you have to help uh, the agent in Cursor know what to do with that MCP server. So all of these rules that I copied and pasted here, you're going to find them right here in the, in the documentation of the MCP server under integrating with the Cursor IDE. There is a link there. You click there, and here are the instructions. This is basically to help the agent understand how to use that MCP server. Copy this, paste it there, you are ready to go. Now, what I have here is a bare, it's just simple, there's nothing, it's a print hello world Python application. So I'm gonna run it just to, so you see it running here in, in a second. Uh, let's see, okay, hello world, that's it. Now, let's say I want to create a web application. I created a prompt. I'm going to copy and paste here just so I don't have to repeat myself. It's a very simple prompt, okay? And I'm pasting it here in cursor. It says create a specification to implement the following application. Do not write any code. So right now, I don't care about the code, just about the spec. It will be a web application using Flask, um, basically two pages and both pages, an index page and about page. They're going to be linking to each other, and I want a welcome message on the index page. That's it. I'm just asking Cursor to generate this specification. I'm going to submit this, and what's going to happen is that Cursor is going to start interacting with the Graffiti MCP tool. Why is that? Because we are telling Cursor, as part of the user instructions, to go and, and break all of this information down save it in the graph database, okay? And interact with the graph database. Anytime Cursor is coming up with something, it's just gonna send all of that information to the graph database. Now, that's it. This is this, the specification. It's telling me what it needs to do and whatnot. This is awesome. Before we go to the next step, let me show you what just happened, okay? So if I, if I go here by navigate uh, to the graph database, you will see, let me click here, for example, look at this. This was just created here. I just clicked on the has members relationship uh, type, and you can see the about page is related to the index page, which is, which is true. The index page, it's related to the web application. The web application is related to Flask. Uh, the summary description, one member is the Flask. Flask is one of the requirements that I created. So you can see here how all of the information was broken down. What I created, it was broken down into this entity relationship graph and saved in my database. Now, why do you care about this? Well, this is now persistent. So I can basically go back to Cursor now and just close it. Like I'm gonna close the chat. You don't need to close the, the instance of Cursor, but I'm gonna just close the chat completely. I'm gonna open a brand new one. Sorry, I'm, I'm gonna open a brand new one. So this is supposed to be new, okay? And now let me ask a question to Cursor. What, uh, what framework did I say we needed to use to create the web app? I'm gonna ask a question, and now that question, Cursor is gonna to go to the database and retrieve that question. You specify that the web application must be built using Flask. This is a factual requirement stored in the knowledge graph. If you need more details, so now Cursor remembers, and I can make changes to that uh, specification, and I can actually ask Cursor, all right, let's build the code. And this is a brand new session. This could be happening 10 days from today. And all of the information is going to be in that knowledge graph database. As I make progress with my application, 
as I add more requirements or modify requirements, Cursor will take care connected to that Graffiti MCP server. Cursor will be saving and storing that entire specification in the database, making that memory a huge help. By the way, Cursor finished here. I'm going to accept it. Uh, let's run it now. Okay, so something is going on. Warning, this is a development server. Okay, so this is just a warning. So this is the URL. I think I have it uh, here on my browser. Let's see if that's true. Welcome to the index page. I'm gonna click on about, uh, back to the index. So this is exactly what I said that the specification, I wanted the specification to be. And again, super cool that all of this information now is stored in the NeoDB uh, database, in the Knowledge Graph database, and you can come back anytime. You can make modifications to it, and you can have that persistent memory work with Cursor. By the way, this is not uh, specific to Cursor. You could use the same exact technique for any AI agent that you're building. As long as they support MCP, you can use the same method. If they do not support MCP, you can use uh, Graffiti directly. But if they do support MCP, this is just a super, super cool way of adding that layer of memory. So hopefully this makes sense. I'm going to leave a few links below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.